Welcome back, Storm fans. Brent Cook here, and today we're playing One Land Twiddle Storm, or is it Belcher? Who actually knows? We'll get to that in a few minutes. But before then, I have some announcements. Over the weekend, I became a dad for the first time. Pretty excited. Great news. Really thrilled. What that means for the future of this YouTube channel, I don't know. I'm going to try to keep up the content production for as long as I can. If I have to go down to three days a week in the future, that's a possibility. But for now, I'm going to try to keep on doing videos five days a week. I don't really know what the plan is. We're just going to figure it out as we go. I really appreciate everyone's support. All of the congratulations, the thank yous means a lot. Thank you. So the second thing is that while I was in the hospital, I have plenty of time to type. And while I had something on my bucket list I wanted to do, and that was the Rogsai Primer. If you're a fan of CEDH, definitely go and follow our Mox field. That link is in the description below. And I made a mega primer. I mean, this thing is long. It was about 50 pages in Word. Yeah, so definitely go check this out. I would appreciate that. The, um, the alternative card choices section still needs to be filled out. That is not done yet. It will be coming, I promise. But I wanted to get it live and, well, it's live now, so you can go check that out. Uh, we can close this. And then a few other quick things. So month of December, if you're a member of this channel, you get access to videos early. It's a $50 membership tier perk. This month, you get it for $5. So another, I mean, this is part of being a member, but being a member, you unlock badges and emotes. We are, as I record this, Eight members short of the Rog Rack emote. That's the next one I want. I get it at 125 members. So if you're thinking about becoming a member, please help me unlock that next emote slot. I would greatly appreciate it. I really want to hit it this month. So please, 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 please give me that Christmas present. I want a Rog Rack emote. All right. And then the final announcement, January 14th to the 15th in San Jose, there is Silicon Dynasty, a CEDH 4K hosted by Eminence Gaming. You can go to eminence.events to sign up. Once again, that is eminence.events. All right. So One Land Belcher or One Land Twiddle Storm, whatever you want to call it. This is a deck we featured here on the channel multiple times. Today, we're trying out some different stuff. So we're trying the card Goblin Char Belcher. Traditionally, this deck only plays the Grape Shot. Really, it's all you need. But right now, there's a lot of main deck Blood Moons. And while this deck can't beat a Blood Moon because you need Lotus Field to win. Well, if you play Goblin Char Belcher, you can just get to the point where you have four lands, you cast Goblin Char Belcher the hard way, and then you activate it. It's pretty interesting. So I'm trying this out today over the Vizier slot. Some people talked about cutting Reach through Mist. I think Reach is actually better because when you splice it, you get the same effect as a Vizier on the Lotus Field, except this card can actually help you hit land drops and find other missing pieces where Vizier is a little bit more clunky. So I think Reach just being more flexible means that you should keep it. But we are playing Goblin Char Belcher today. You don't need to reforge the soul package or anything like that, even though we have recrossed the paths because Ideas and Mound can get the job done on its own. Essentially, you just keep on chaining Ideas and Mounds along with Psychic Puppetry. And well, if you're unfamiliar with the deck, let's say you've never seen it before, the idea is to get Lotus Field in play, right? This beautiful land. It's the only land in your deck, which means you can find it with a button harvest. And then from there, you cast Ideas and Mound, you splay Psychic Puppetry and then you untap the Lotus Field. That's how we make our mana in this deck. So essentially Dream Grip, Twiddle, they're all just blue dark rituals. And then Ideas and Mound Splice with Psychic Puppetry untaps the Lotus Field, yada, yada, yada. That's why it's Twiddle Storm. Well, the rituals in Belcher aren't very good. Like Desperate Ritual, Pyratic Ritual, they're not great. But when you have Dream Script with Lotus Field, you essentially have blue dark ritual in Modern, which means that accelerating into Belcher should be easier. So that's what we're really looking to do here. I am trying something else today as well. Jawari uh, Disruption. I'm playing this over uh, Salundi Vision. They're both blue tap lands, but one knock on this deck previously is that it has no main deck interaction. There's been very, very, very few times in the history that I've played this deck that I've wanted to hard cast uh, Salundi Vision. So we're trying Disruption today. Hopefully that ends up being a more relevant spell. It also stop Blood Moon, which is pretty interesting, especially turn two on the draw. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, moving through the list. One thing to note, Goblin Charbelcher is an artifact. He cannot be uh, re retrieved with Peer Through Depths. So just that is one thing that concerned me when building the deck today. But 
literally these are the only cards peer through depths other than lotus field doesn't get so i think we'll be fine um going through shatter skill smashing i cut the uh the valakut stone forges the valakut awakening slot it does help when you're trying to ideas and bound combo over and over and then just chain those cards but one thing this deck was lacking was removal for creatures so this card beats main deck magus of the moon it beats a bunch of other stuff too like thalia so i want to try this but a real reason to play it more than the creature removal aspect is that it comes into play untapped i felt like previously we had a few too many tap lands so a red source that's untapped that allows you to cast mana from our foes immediately i think will be pretty impactful so we get an untapped land that's also a removal spell i'm into it so we're trying this today if it doesn't work no sweat off my back uh sometimes you fail it happens but i i want to give this a go and this sideboard i've made a switch to slaughter pact over dress down and echoing truth basically i just want efficient ways to answer megas of the moon that's pretty much it uh it also answers like meddling mage or whatever but I want to try Slaughter Pact again. I've been testing it in Legacy recently, and I've been really, really impressed. That's all I can think of mentioning for now. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, put those in the uh, comment section down below. I'll do my best to answer all of those. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it, and I appreciate everyone's congratulations, all that good stuff. But uh, for now, I want to hop on in and play match number one. I do have a podcast to record after this, so I need to get the show on the road. Thanks for watching. Round one coming up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicsworm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the play versus someone named Joe. Uh, we have a green land, but that's it. I think we should probably take a mulligan. It's uh, also worth mentioning we're playing one more land in the deck now. Here we have one land green source harvest. We have guaranteed lotus field. I'm going to keep this and just hope that we find the second land. Play the battle, get recovery, pass the turn. T-Chrome Coast, so likely Hammer Time. A matchup that I do feel favored in, but unfortunately right now we just don't have the second land. We didn't draw it there. Okay, I'm going to cast Harvest. They can draw their card. I'm going to go get the Lotus Field. Pass. Pretty cool trick you could do. Assuming that this was a blue land, you could play Lotus Field with its sacrifice trigger on the stack, twiddle it three times, play Belcher, and win. They play Springleaf Drum. Giver of Ruins, that's fine. Haywire Might, sure. All right, deck, I'm asking you for a land here, please. Yikes. All right, I guess I should have went to five. Saga goes to two. Ink Moth and Nexus. They're attacking for three. We'll take it down to 16. And they're passing draw. So they're in step. They're going to make a saga. I think I'm just dead. I mean, might as well make them kill me, I guess. So they're going to make a saga. It's a 4-4. Four, four. But even if I draw an untapped blue source, I can't live. I'm two turns away from being fine here. Blooded Strand. That's a weird one. There's the hammer. I guess it's not weird. Okay. My bad. Shadow Spear. At 16. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just dead. They get in. We'll draw a card. Womp womp. That did not go according to plan. All right, let's try to do better this time. I probably want these Force of Vigors. We're at 63 cards. Hmm. So you can definitely board out one copy of Psychic Puppetry. And I think you could probably shave two Reach Through Mists. We'll try this out. You want at least a couple copies of Reach to get into your Recross the Paths piles, but you don't need a full four. The reason we play four in the main deck is so that you can consistently 
get into the recross piles in game one situations when your deck is more linear. But in post board games, I do think that decreases in value just a hair. Game number two, we're on the play. This time we have multiple lands. We don't have Lotus Field, but I do have Recross the Paths on three. I'm going to keep this. And I guess we'll play the Seagate tapped on the first turn. Pass. Hallowed Fountain. Esper Sentinel. Draw a card. Another Seagate. Play the Turn Timber. Yes. Pass. In their upkeep, we will let them draw a card. I'm going to tap down their Hallowed Fountain. I think the name of the game is Tempo in this matchup and not necessarily card advantage. We're going to make blue blue. And now we're going to splice and tap their Hallowed Fountain. Yes. We drew us another recross. A little weird. We play a Paradise Mantle. Equip, and they're passing. Okay, we will take a draw. Juari disruption will fall to fourteen. We cross the paths. Once again, our opponent is allowed to draw off this. We cross. Do you have spell pierce? Looks like they do. Bummer. Okay, we do have the other recross in our hand. Not the end of the world. So guard is aid. I might be in trouble here. Untapped Hallowed Fountain with five cards in hand. I do not have Force of Vigor. Yikes. That's a Colossus Hammer with an open mana. 11 damage coming in, and I currently can't do anything about it. So I'm going to go to three. I have four cards. White mana for what? Uh, and the untap. Okay, take a draw. Manamorphose. Like I mentioned, I am just flat out dead to hmm, their onboard stuff. And I can't play the land on tap because I'm at three. So I think we play the Jewari Disruption. And now we pass the turn. So I believe I have two outs here. I can cast Manamorphose into Force of Vigor. Or I can cast... Manamorphose into an instant speed arcane spell. So, Manamorphose. Blue, blue. Okay, so this would appear to do it. So we're going to splice and tap the Esper Sentinel. And it actually resolves somehow. Okay. Uh, we'll take Abundant Harvest. Okay, so it looks like I get to live a turn. There's a Saga. They still have five in hand. Lavinia, that's a pain in the butt. I don't actually know what gets me a win here. It might just be the other Singleton Reach Through Mists. So I can play Harvest, go get Lotus Field, the Float 2, and Psychic... I guess I could burn the Psychic Puppetry. And hope that's enough to keep me alive. Okay, Harvest. Land. And now we play Lotus Field. And I think we sacrifice a blue source. I think we want to keep a green source around. Okay. I mean, I don't... I guess I could naturally draw Ideas Inbound next turn. That would be the out, assuming that I even get to live. And their upkeep, we will cast the Psychic Puppetry targeting the Esper Sentinel. No, we will not pay 11. Yes, I would like to tap it. And now the Lavinia can attack and put me to one. But even if I drew ideas in mind, it would have to be into actual perfects. Because the rest of my hand just doesn't do enough right now. So they can put me to one. I'm dead to Shadow Spear here. Um, or Hammer, but they didn't have them. Giver of Ruins. Another Sentinel. Ornithopter, sure. Just keeping that Storm Count high. Storm 5. Can I have a miracle? Seagate Restoration does not do it, and we are deterministically dead. I will concede. So uh, not exactly a great round one, but that's fine. I have full confidence we will bounce back and get to do the thing. Match number two coming up.
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match number two, we're on the play. Let's get a win. So here we have two lands. We have access to Lotus Field. We have an untapper. This hand is bananas. Keep. Keep, 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 keep. Nothing can stop me now. We've opened up the unbeatable hand. Please don't take anything I say seriously. All right, we're going to lightning bolt myself because, you know, why not? Cast this abundant harvest. We will go get the Lotus Field. Pass. Opponent on six cards. Fire Bluff Canal into a Channeler. The world's most boring deck. Okay. Mishra's Bobble. They surveil away a Brazen Borrower. And now they're bobbling us. Sure thing. So they're going up to five cards in hand now. And they did get to choose what they're drawing with the surveil triggers. We will auto yield to Mishra's Bobble. Take a draw. We cross the paths. Yes, and I think I'm going to Psychic Puppetry their land again in the upkeep. Manamorphose. Blue, blue. Tap that Spire Bluff Canal. Yes, I'd like to tap it. Beautiful, and we drew the Disruar Juari Disruption. That card is so difficult to say. They missed their attack on accident, so we save a damage. Big fan. Turn Timber Symbiosis. Hmm. So if they are a main deck Blood Moon version, I could just play the turn Timber and pass. But it's less mana next turn. I think I'm supposed to just... Oh, our opponent just conceded. Okay. Maybe I'm taking too long. I don't know. Oh, and then they conceded the match. They must have to go. I'm sorry. Not exactly how I plan on getting my first match win. With the deck, but I probably was going to play Lotus Field here and pass. I was considering trying to play around Blood Moon because we have Mana Morphose, which represents blue mana, so we can have Jawari Disruption to counter Blood Moon. I'm already liking this card more than I like Slendy Vision. I'm pretty sure that this is the right card to be playing uh, moving forward, but uh, okay, we're one and one, I guess. Round three coming up. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Round number three, we're on the draw. I'm going to try this one. This hand has two lands. We have an ideas, a peer, a puppetry. All we're really lacking is the lotus field itself. Our opponent began the match by revealing a copy of Gigantha into Mishra's Bobble. They use the bobble on themselves. Steam vents. Ouch. Monastery Swift Spear. So it looks like we have an Is It Blitz version. They draw off the bobble. Kind of some bad sequencing there. They could have uh, added a damage on. Play the Balagad Recovery because if we draw into Abundant Harvest, I want to be able to play it. Dragon's Rage Channeler into another bobble. So they get a Surveil Trigger and a Prowess Trigger. They put a land to the graveyard. Starting themselves, they play Scalding Tarn, and they get in for two. I fall to 17, and they have three cards left. Come on, Abundant Harvest. Or, you know, Lotus Field itself is also acceptable. Take a draw. Ding Dong, Harvest, Land. How do I want to do this? I think I want the Disruption as an option to be played. So I'm going to... Just play the Seaborn or Seagate Reborn and pass the turn. They fetch a mountain, no spell on the end step. This is a beautiful mountain. I believe it was originally 
an ice age uh that is the ice age symbol but i think it was also and i could be wrong here but i think i remember it being reprinted in cold snap they surveil away lightning bolt imagine being the blitz deck where lightning bolt isn't good enough for you yikes that's powerful they are able to play a mountain this turn, but it's already their third turn, so that doesn't exactly align. So it was just a draw one. They play another Swift Spear, and we have an opening here. We're uh, going to attempt to go for the throat and get a match win, or a game win, I should say. Mutagenic Growth, okay, it's spicy. They, they surveil away a Lava Dart? Oh, wow. That's nuts. That Lava Dart represents three damage. Another Mutagenic Growth? Underworld Breach. Am I just dead? Uh, that's 9, 14. Yeah, I'm dead to the Lava Dart from 17 life. That's absolutely insane. Wow. We had a turn 3 rolled up and it wasn't good enough. Oh, I was going to go bananas there. Wow. I don't think we want Slaughter Pact here because it requires us to have Lotus Field already on the battlefield. Um, I'm just going to resubmit and hope that we don't get goldfish like that again. Yikes. Game number two. On the play. They reveal Gigantha. We cannot keep. Going to six. This hand just doesn't do anything. We have to mulligan to five. So we have two lands and a button harvest. So we'll keep this, get rid of the disruption and Morphos. Oh no, the, the disruption was a, a land, my bad. So peer through depths. Morphos. Alright. Play the turn timber. Trying to save some life here, and we'll play it tapped. Mountain. Soul Scar Mage. Take a draw. Play the disruption. Harvest, land, we'll go get Lotus Field. So I can play Belcher next turn now. The problem is that my hand is a turn four. It's just not fast enough. I guess maybe they don't goldfish me on turn three. Maybe that's a possibility. Fiery Islet. Two mana for a Swift Spear and another Swift Spear. I'm definitely getting goldfished on turn three. Okay, so this is a bummer. If I drew a twiddle, does that change? I, I drawing twiddle doesn't actually change it here. Um, is it twiddle six mana? So slaughter pact would have been relevant with this specific uh, draw. Play the lotus field. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Twiddle the lotus field. Yes. Tap for blue. Play a belcher. And now we have to pray that our opponent doesn't deal me 14 damage with three prowess creatures in play and five cards in hand for the turn. Pretty unlikely. We have to hope that they just have a number of lands in hand, I guess. All right, so now they have four cards. Channeler, Channeler. Okay, this is what I want to see. Lava Dart, does this do it? I don't know. I'm not smart enough to figure this out. I think if they hit like another Lava Dart, I'm dead. So now they attack. This is six damage. Another Lava Dart does it, I think, but they chose not to flash it back because they could have surveilled into another Lava Dart. We'll take a draw. And we will target them with Goblin Charbelcher. Belch Belch. Mulligan to five, too. Cool beans. Would you look at that? Okay, so we need to somehow live against this hyper aggro blitz deck. I don't think Slaughter Pact is the answer because if they try to turn three me, I can't cast it on the draw. Once again, I think it's just keep our configuration the same and hope for a better hand. It was nice there that Belcher provided a way to win on very few resources. I do think that was a really good thing. Here we have three lands, but none of them are blue and none of none of the cards in our hand get Lotus Field. So I think we're supposed to ship it. Uh, another mulligan. We'll go to five. We have a red land and then an abundant harvest. So any land off the top means I can harvest. I think I'm supposed to keep this. Get rid of the two blue spells. I'm not feeling very confident in this game. 
Scalding Tarn. Mountain into Swift Spear. We go to 19, take a draw. That's a Shatter Skull. Pass. Bloodstained Mire. Another copy of Monastery Swift Spear. Mishra's Bobble. They attack for four. I'm at 15. We need a land here, Doc. They draw off Mishra's Bobble and. It's a land, but it's a tap land. Not loving this. So next turn, assuming that I draw a card that's not very good, assuming I get another turn, actually, I can Manamorphose for green, blue, hope to draw Twiddle, put Lotus Field on the table, Twiddle it into Manamorphose, hope that another Twiddle recross the Pasmorphose, but I think that leaves me with only one card in hand. So even though I can get into the pile, it wouldn't be lethal. This is eight damage. I'm at seven and they have four in hand. Come on, deck, please, Twiddle. Okay, that's a start. So we'll cast Manamorphose. We need to do blue-green. That doesn't help. All right, uh, Abundant Harvest will say land. Play the Lotus Field. Now we sacrifice these. I'm trying to think if there's a reasonable way to win this. So I can Twiddle here. Yes, and now we... Manamorphose. So this is going to be incredibly difficult. I have to Manamorphose here into Twiddle. Recross the paths. No, I don't think there is a win. Unless I'm missing something. I guess I could hit like Psychic Puppetry plus Ideas or something. Blue, blue. So I actually hit the Twiddle. Oh, uh, jeez. Okay, so now we will untap Lotus Field. And I can recross with two mana available. Which means I can mana morphose into any card I want. But I don't know if there's a card that wins with only two mana with the Seagate being a dead card. I think I'm supposed to cast it. Ooh, I could grape shot their team or try to grape shot their team. That's an interesting line to take. Okay, so we'll do turn timber first, and then grape shot, and then we'll do ideas inbound. So this ideas inbound is going to draw into twiddle puppetry ideas. So we'll do dream script, psychic puppetry, ideas, and now that ideas can draw into ideas, ideas. Belcher, Twiddle, Twiddle, Twiddle. We'll do some Reaches, and then Piers. I don't really know what I'm doing anymore. Any order. Mutagenic Growth is their top card. So we're going to put this on the bottom. The Recross will return to my hand. Manamorphose. Red, red. We'll do red, blue. It doesn't hurt. So this is for eight grape shot one two three four five six seven oh wow we're actually clearing their board okay they're drawing immunogenic growth grape shot came up huge there expressive iteration Scalding Tarn. They play the Tarn. They have four in hand. We know one of them is Mutagenic Growth. They play a Steam Vents. Third Path Iconoclast. Okay. We're going to draw the Ideas Amount. Hopefully I stack the rest of the deck correctly. I can't believe we're even at this point. Ideas. Untap Target Permanent. We will untap Lotus Field. Wow. Okay. Puppetry. Ideas inbound on tapping Lotus Field. Yes. Puppetry. Yes. Oh my, I can't believe we're doing this. Okay. Ideas inbound. Untap. Yes. Blue. Untap. I believe we've got it. Untap. Untap. So I'm going to choose to be cautious here. Let's say that our opponent is a giant troll, okay? 
and they're just waiting for the Belcher, we can now just cantrip into Diswar Juwari Disruption and make sure that we have backup. Okay. Reach through Miss, yes. Reach again. I know that it's silly that I'm sitting here trying to dig for Juwari Disruption, but I think it's actually the correct move. Like, this game could be over, but I don't think you're supposed to do that. We had another puppetry. Okay. Splice is a break even on mana. Grab another peer. Now we'll cast another from 14. Storm count doesn't really matter. We'll grab the Juari Disruption. Yes. Goblin Charbelcher. 29 cards left in deck, too. We have plenty. Target them. I can't believe we came back. Both post board games, we won on Mulligan to fives. And that'll do. That's the match. We earned this victory. We are two and one. That was really, really sweet. Wow. Okay. I can't believe I found the path there. Aha. Third path. Get it. Match number four coming up. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Round number four, we're on the draw. Our opponent once again has revealed Gigantha. I'm going to guess it's Blitz again. We're going to keep this kind of sketchy hand. It doesn't have a second land. We have one Shatter Skull Smashing. But if we find the second land, we already have Lotus Field and we have a bunch of Twiddles. But it is in fact Blitz again. So I just need to find land number two. A Bobble targeting me. They're drawing back up to five cards. We'll take a draw step. And it's a land. Play the Seagate. I do not want to pay three life versus the blood stack. Thank you. And we'll pass. Ragavan. Interesting. Okay. I might want to do some damage here. Hmm. Yes, I want to pay three life. So I can grape shot just the Ragavan. Or I can try to manamorphose into another spell that's worth casting which there's very few of them in our deck. So I think I'm going to play conservatively here and just kill the Ragavan. And if they want to mean a genetic growth to keep Ragavan around, I guess that's less damage coming at my face. And it is in fact immunogenic growth. Sure thing. They're getting in for three damage. They're going to create a treasure token and exile the top card of my library, which is an abundant harvest. Didn't actually need that. So they did me a favor. They cast the harvest. They get to say land here. They do and they find bloodstained mire. They play it. Two mana into expressive iteration. Okay. It seems a little bit like there's a, a slight nambo between Ragavan and Prowess. Because Ragavan gives you mana to cast spells post combat. With Prowess you want to play cards pre combat. We draw another abundant harvest anyway. So we'll float a couple mana here. Sacrifice those. Let's Manamorphose. We'll do blue-green. Oh, if I would have done blue-blue, I hit the puppetry. Okay, so now we will twiddle to untap. Yes. Reach through mists and we'll splice, which makes some mana. If this hits Belcher, it's a win. It did not hit Belcher. Okay, let's harvest. Non-land. Bummer. We're at 13. What to do? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this Belgad recovery and we'll return. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to do for green because I'm really just looking to cycle this anyway. So let's return the Abundant Harvest. Okay. Play the Harvest and we'll say non-land again. Another twiddle. So it's not looking good. So we have to live through our next turn and we have to draw into something worthwhile. They fetch using Arid Mesa. Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt. Looking like uh, the end of my life here. Gut Shot. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably dead. This brings me to six and that is six damage. I just 
never found a payoff there. I had a couple opportunities to draw into an action spell and I didn't. We would have had another Balagad, which would have been the best it could have done is cycle, which would have cycled into nothing. All right, well, we weren't going to win that one. Resubmit. Game number two, we're on the play. Opponent taking some time here to reveal their Gigantha. And they finally do it. Okay, so here we have one green land. We have a recross, but it's only a single land in a fast matchup. I think you're supposed to mulligan this. Multiple lands, but they're all tap lands. Ay, ay, ay. Um, we'll keep, I guess. Bottom the extra tap land. Because it's not like we want land number three if it's going to come into play tapped and not be Lotus Field anyway. Play the battle again. Aaron Mesa. And a channeler. Mishra's Bobble. They surveil away a Spire Bluff Canal. They look at my top card and it looks like we're about to head to my turn. Trigger draw. Not very good. Play the Juari Runes pass. I don't know how popular this Blitz deck is. I don't typically face it this often. But if it is this popular, you could look at Amulet of Vigor in the deck to speed up the tap lands and untap lands. And I think that could be a meaningful change. And they just untap two lands go, huh? We'll play the Balagad pass on their end step. We can play pure through depths. No spells on our end step from the opponent. Wooded Foothills channeler okay this feels like counter spell we'll fall the 18 life we'll light up the stage i feel like our opponent this round isn't exactly playing so it's the same deck but definitely not the same list like i wouldn't be surprised if this person was over 10 cards different from the previous opponent on their end step peer through depths we found abundant harvest that can get us a lotus field Draw step. Shatter Skull Smashing. We'll name land. Manamorphos. Let's see if we can find a reach through, or I'm sorry, a psychic puppetry for this reach through mess. They're going to fluster storm a Manamorphos. Really? Okay. That's a little surprising to me. Yeah, my spell's been countered. You got it. They surveil. They keep both cards on top. Play this, uh... Lotus Field. I'm going to choose to keep the green source around because we'll make casting Manamorphos just a touch easier. We'll pass. Both of their channelers are Delirious. Monastery Swift Spear. They don't play the Mountain in Exile, which is interesting. They do have Immunogenic Growth over there. They dart me. Prevail away a Fetch Land and a Ragavan. We go to 17. They play the Munigenic Growth. This deck is so efficient. Like, I could see myself playing this deck. It definitely seems up my alley. Now they're swinging for 11. They could flashback the Lava Dart as well. They do. Sprite Dragon. The Lightning Bolt. So I'm at 16 and they're swinging in for 12. A Lightning Bolt in hand would have killed me there. Draw. Recross the paths. So, I can go to one, but I'm dead to any thing they have in their hand. If they don't have anything in hand, we actually have a win. I'm going to assume that their hand is blank. All right, we're at one life. We cross the paths. Okay, so you're supposed to put a turn timber on top. And then from there, we will go get a psychic puppetry. Now I can do a bunch of ideas inbound. Goblin Charbelcher, Dreams Grips, Reach Through Mists, some Twiddles, here, and then I'm just going to do any order, it's fine. Fiery Islet's their top card, we'll put this on the bottom. Recross the pass returns to our hand, and now we'll cast Manamorphose, and I'm looking to make blue blue. Manamorphose, blue blue. We will splice the reach through mist, untapping the lotus field. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Untap. Love it. Okay, just keep going down the line. 
Untap the Lotus Field. Untap Lotus Field. Untap Lotus Field. Ideas and Bound will untap. Yes. Play Belcher. And activate. So if they, if for some reason, they have like a stifle sort of effect here, I could keep going. That's why I wanted to get up to two mana. They take a whole bunch and we're headed to game number three. I feel like I got away with one there. Resubmit. Game number three, our opponent reveals Gigantha. We have one blue source and a lot of twiddles. Unfortunately, not a keep. This actually isn't bad. Like, if you find Lotus Field, it's insane. We'll keep this in bottom twiddle. Like, an Abundant Harvest just makes this hand bananas. They lead off on Scalding Tarn. Channeler. Draw for turn. Hell yeah. The question is, do I play this tapped or untapped? I'm going to try to save some life here, because it's not like I'm going to do anything with the mana on turn two. The thing is, our opponent showed us Fluster Storm, and this could be a target of a counter spell. All right, so they're tapping for a red here. Soul Scar Mage. They're holding open a blue. Oh, light up the stage. Okay, so no Fluster Storm. Steam Vent Soul Scar. My decision to wait did pay dividends, and this was a really good draw. It looks like we're set up for a turn three win now. Harvest. Land. Whew. Okay. A point of place is Steam Vents from Exile. Monastery Swift Spear. They have two cards remaining. Lavadar is one of the cards in their graveyard. That is an extra spell for prowess and one damage. They bolt me. They get one surveil, two prowess triggers. They surveil away another copy of Soul Scar Mage. One card remains in hand. And it's immunogenic growth. So I'm at 16. This makes it 11. Plus the dart is plus 3. So that's 14. I would go to 2. I think we've got this. Plus my math is off. I believe I end up at 2 here. Now they can play the Soul Scar post combat. Draw. It doesn't really help. All right, Lotus Field, Sacrifice. Get rid of those. Whittle. Yes, untap. So, Reach Through Mist. I'm actually one mana short. So, I want to keep the Reach Through Mist around. And instead, I'm going to Ideas Unbound. Because I only need two mana to win. That was brutal. That was actually just terrible. Oh, wow. Um... That was bad. All three of those cards were blanks. Holy moly. Reach. All we had to do was find a twiddle off that or another reach through mess, another psychic puppetry, and this would have been a win. Does that do it? Might. So I tap this for green. I can recross the pads, floating four. This does it. Yep, this definitely does it. Okay. So here I can just put ideas on top. All right, so we put three ideas. We'll put one Belcher from Dreams Grips. Reach Through Mists. This deck is so sweet. Cure Through Depths. A couple Twiddles. And then we'll put a Grape Shot. The rest can be random. We'll keep this on top. Cast Harvest. We'll say non-land. And now we ideas with psychic puppetry. We got there. Hell yeah. This deck is very good at doing the turn three win. And the opponent concedes the game and we got another match victory. Hell yeah. All right, we're three and one. One match remains. Let's go get a W. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com decklist. 
the fifth and final round. I am back from re recording the Eternal Glory podcast. It's been a few hours, hopefully feeling a little bit more refreshed. We have access to Lotus Field with Abundant Harvest, and we have a green source. We have a secondary land. This hand seems amazing to me. Keep. Ooh, all right. Misty Rainforest. Another Steam Vents deck. Okay. A little bit unfortunate. Take a draw. Another recross. I want to try to make sure that this Abundant Harvest resolves. We don't know if they're the Prowess version or not, but they didn't reveal a Gigantha. So that would tell me that they're probably playing the Murktide build. And that build has four copies of Counterspell on top of Spell Pierce and everything else. So I'd like to avoid that. We've picked up our Lotus Field and now we're passing the turn back to our opponent who has a Ragavan in play. They get in with the monkey. We'll take two going to 15. They'll get the top card of our library and a treasure. Fear through depths. Expressive iteration. They might be looking for land number two here. They find unholy heat and pass the turn. They did not have land number two. We'll play the Juari disruption and then pass back. Kind of a slow start for us. Wish I could capitalize on our opponent's mana troubles, but not really what this deck does. Ragavan gets in again. We'll go to 13. Treasure token being generated. And they hit a Seagate Restoration. Our opponent is not able to play this as a land. Ragavan specifically says cast. They play another copy of Expressoration, Expressive Iteration. This time they find a Scalding Tarn. They found land number two. Another Steam Vents down to 14, and Channeler. Draw. Hmm. I think I'm supposed to peer through depths here. We need to find the Psychic Puppetry. We failed. I think I'm going to take Twiddle. Any order. Hmm. If I get Blood Mooned, I'm probably not winning this game anyway, so I'm going to play out the Lotus Field now. Because it's more mana on the following turn. We'll pass. And the opponent hits land number three. They're going to get in. I'll go to ten life. Assuming they don't do anything pre-combat. They find mana morphos. That's a pretty good one for them. Because not only do they get to, you know. Ooh, they're not even going to cast it. They're just representing counter spells, huh? Okay. Hmm. Ideas inbound. A little nervous here. I think I should just try to eat up a counter spell. Let's play Recrods. See if this resolves. I'm also fine if this doesn't. I'd rather eat a counter spell out of their hand. They consider. They mill a Murktide. This is going to give them instant. So now they have Delirium. Recross the paths. Another consider. Come on, please counter spell this. They have five damage in play at the moment, and it resolves. I doubt that they don't have any counter spells. It seems very improbable. So I could play Seagate untapped into Twiddle, but it just seems like how could they possibly not have a counter spell here? I think more realistically is that they just have double lightning bolt and they're going to kill me on their turn. I think both of those things are true, actually. I think they have a counter spell and they have access to lethal. How should I be building this, though? I guess we'll put Turn Timber on top. And then we need a Psychic Puppetry. I think we want to put a couple Twiddles in there. Try to space them out a little bit. Put a Belcher in. Dream's Grip. I just don't feel like I'm going to win this. All right, clicking through. Any order. Keep this on top for the Ragavan. I've decided that I'm not going to play the land untapped. I, I do think that they have lethal, but I also don't think that Twiddle into Ideas is likely to win. Like, they have to have Counterspell or Spell Pierce or some sort of way to interact. Here they have an Unstub Lightning Bolt. All right, so I'm at seven. They have five power on the table. Okay, so I go to two. Ragavan triggers, they get my turn timber, tap land. You're really passing, okay. Let's twiddle. 
All right, so that is resolved. And now I will cast Reach Through Mist, Splice Psychic Puppetry, attempt to untap this Lotus Field. Really? Going after a Reach Through Mist? Oh, changing your mind. They are, in fact, changing their mind. Okay. I don't know what the move is here. Because, like, my only action spell is the Ideas Inbound. Hmm. I have five mana, so this Jawari Disruption is not even close to being active. Okay, so... Let's untap Lotus Field, I guess. I thought about trying to entwine the Dream Script, but when they have five mana, that's just not a play that's worth your reading. Let's try to resolve Ideas Inbound. Six mana floating. Or six mana available. We have five mana floating. And there's the counter spell. Pretty sure that I am just flat dead. I can hard cast the Seagate by burning the Psychic Puppetry, but we don't have an untap land. Okay, game number two. So this is the Murktide build, as I mentioned. It's a deck with counter spells in it, unlike the Blitz deck. So we're going to change up the plan. We definitely want some way to fight back. I think we likely want to board down on Reach Through Mist, possibly even down to one copy, leave one for the uh, Recross the Paths pile. That brings us down to 63. You can board out one copy of Psychic Puppetry. That brings us to 62. And I think we likely don't want a bunch of Belchers in this matchup. It's a pretty tough card to resolve against Counterspell and Spell Pierce and everything else. So I think we could probably shave down on those. I mean, you could board in Force of Vigor for Blood Moon. It's just really tough to... Maybe we're supposed to board out Manamorphose and just keep in all three Belchers instead. So it's tough to want to board in Force of Vigor versus the blue Counterspell deck. That only has one, maybe two artifacts or enchantments. Same thing with Slaughter Pact, where most lists tend to play a 1-1 split between Magus and Blood Moon. And... Are you really supposed to board in Slaughter Pact and Force of Vigor on the off chance you get to hit the right one? Probably not. So I think instead we're going to look to win through instead of winning around them, I guess, is a way you could say it. Okay, let's see if we can come back and get this second game. We have two mana sources. We have a Belcher. We don't have access to Lotus Field, but we do have Peer to help dig for Abundant Harvest. I think it's fine enough. We'll start off by playing out the Balagad and pass. If we do find Lotus Field quickly, there's a chance we could slam the Belcher in play when our opponent's tapped out on the second turn. They play Bobble. Well, they're not going to tap out now with this Ragavan. That's annoying. They draw a card. We draw a card. Recross the pads. So we'll take three. Play the Pier. I don't actually want any of this. Um... I guess I take land number three for recrods. Okay. Pass the turn. They play steam vents. Ragged van will connect. We go to 15. They get a treasure. Whittle. Finisher's bobble. They pass the turn. Not surprised. Let's go to 12. I imagine that this is going to be counterspelled, but let's put it on the stack anyway. Surprise, surprise. And now we pass the turn. So we're going to take two from Ragavan here, going down to 10 life. They'll get another treasure. Dream script doesn't really matter here. And they're just passing, holding open counter magic. Let's play the Manamorphose, see if I can find something better. We'll do blue, green. How about we find the Singleton Lotus Field? All right, so let's... Try to get back the recross, see if they counter this. Come on, counter spell it. They do not. I'm going to try to be sneaky and hide the Lotus Field and not show it to them. So next turn, what I'm going to do, the game plan at least, is... All right, they bolt me. That's not good. Uh, they cast the recross off the three green sources. They counter it. We play Lotus Field, and then we go Twiddle, Psychic Puppetry, Belcher. Duari Disruption, the card revealed. They have six cards in hand. They play a Spire Bluff Canal down to five. Okay. Take a draw. My own Duari Disruption. 
Recross the paths. A counter target spell. Lotus Field. Sacrifice, sacrifice. Whittle. Another counter spell. Pass the turn. We're dead to Lightning Bolt. They attack. We'll go to three. Ideas and Bound. That's a really good one. And that's a Blood Moon. That's going to KO us, I think. Well, they just all these me. All right. So we went three, two. Not a bad record. I think that the Belchers were really interesting. I thought that there was definitely a game where we won where it was a lot easier because we had them in the deck. I don't know if you actually need three of them. I'm not sure what the right number is. I liked the Shatter Skull Smashings being additional untapped sources and red for Manamorphose. I thought that was great. I thought Jawari Disruption easily overperformed compared to Slendy Vision. That's a change that I'm permanently going to keep. Um... The sideboard didn't really come up much this league, unfortunately. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I would greatly appreciate that. But I really do think that Juari Disruption is here for good. Maybe we split Belcher and Grape Shot as like a 1-1. One, one. Maybe we play four Belchers. I'm not really sure at the moment. Uh, definitely open to feedback. I think that there's something here. And I really do believe that this is a competitive Storm combo deck in Modern. I would play this in a big event before I ever played Gift Storm. A lot of people ask me, like, do you think this or Lotus Breach is better? And I think, like, they're just different decks, and it's not really about which one is better than the other. They're just different things. But uh, I'm going to get off my high horse. It's already pretty late at night as I record this. So uh, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.